I'm Matt Harris, and you're listening to Gospel Tangents. Welcome to Gospel Tangents, the best source for Mormon history, science, and theology. I'm Rick Bennett. We're a proud member of the Dialogue Podcast Network, a collective of independent, interesting podcasts who promote thoughtful, respectful, and engaging inquiry and discussion of all aspects of LDS tradition, thought, arts, and culture. For more information, go to dialoguejournal.com slash podcast network. That's all one word, dialoguejournal.com slash podcast network, and you can see the other podcasts that are part of our wonderful network. So you definitely want to check that out. I'm excited to have Dr. Matt Harris back on the show. We're going to go back to the Carter and Nixon administrations, and we're going to find out if the government really did put pressure on the church over the race ban. Is it true that the government was going to take away the tax-exempt status of the LDS Church? We're going to tackle that conversation, and Dr. Matt Harris is going to share a letter that he received from President Carter over this very topic. So you're not going to want to miss this. It's going to be an awesome episode. Check out our conversation. Well, I'm excited to have one of my favorite guests. Um, Could you go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, Matt Harris. I'm a professor of history at Colorado State University in Southern Colorado. All right, but we're here in Utah today in Huntsville. So um, I'm really excited, even though our last interview went, I think it was about four hours, we still didn't talk about enough. (laughs) (laughs) So uh, I'd love to talk a little bit about, I know on the internet there's all these rumors about the the priesthood and, and temple ban and the IRS was gonna shut down the church, and so I'd really like to, to kind of delve into that, and, and, and you know, what can you tell us about that? Well, the church had, um, I guess maybe we should go back to 1970, the Nixon administration sends a directive out to the IRS saying that they want the IRS to crack down on um, universities and also churches that discriminate and mostly was geared towards universities. But nonetheless, the church, some of the church leaders thought that the Nixon administration would come after the church and revoke its tax exemption status. And Latter-day Saints were writing into the first presidency. The response to the Nixon stuff was published throughout the country. So Latter-day Saints saw the writing on the wall that the government might force the church to ordain uh, black men to the priesthood. This is in the early 70s before the revelation. And anyway, so the Brethren were keeping a pretty good file on letters coming in expressing concern about the IRS coming after them. Ernest Wilkinson, the Harvard-trained lawyer at BYU, the president at the time, he also met with the First Presidency and expressed his um, uh, opinion that, as he put it, quote, a Negro could sue the church one day and may win, end quote, if my memory serves right. Anyway, so that's the IRS. The church also had some legal issues in foreign countries that they didn't want the church to establish uh, a foothold in especially South America. There was a lawsuit in Costa Rica in the mid-70s. They were suing the church. Anyway, so the IRS... In Costa Rica, they were suing the church over what? There was... uh, Well, they weren't suing the church. Let me me back up. They had denied the church uh, property because of the priesthood restriction. And I don't know the specifics of it. I I think there was a lawsuit, as I recall. I don't know the specifics of the lawsuit. But anyway, um, there's this general feeling in the air that the Nixonites and then some of his successors are going to use the IRS to come after churches. See, that that strikes me as kind of funny because, at least in today's world, you think of Republicans and faith and goes together. And it, it, so that wasn't true under the Nixon administration. It seems really weird to me to hear that Nixon's going after religious universities. And, and well, to, to sweeten the pot even further, the guy over the IRS, the, the agency over the IRS, the government agency over the IRS is the Treasury Department, which is run by a Mormon named David Kennedy. Really? <laughs> and I don't know. I can't give you details. I've gone to his papers a little bit. I have. It's a big collection it's restricted so I've I've gotten permission to see some of it but anyway uh, Nixon had waffled didn't want to use the IRS to go after religious religions wanted to respect their First Amendment rights and but yet he had a lot of uh, civil rights groups putting pressure on him that what's the point of having these civil rights laws if the government doesn't protect them right so Nixon uh, protect against discrimination so Nixon decided that he would use an arrow in his quiver, the IRS, to bring some folks into compliance. 
And so he did, took a lot of heat from fellow Republicans for that, who generally erred on the side of the First Amendment and the freedom of religion, as opposed to protecting African Americans from discrimination. Anyway, so that was Nixon, and this picks up with Carter. So Carter and his administration, they had some proclivities along these lines. And um, anyway, on the internet, there are lots and lots of, there's lots and lots of chatter about uh, people saying that President Carter had instructed the IRS to crack down on the church. And I've seen this in probably, I don't know, half dozen to a dozen places. And people are so emphatic about it that yes, he did this. And one of them even went through his journal, which is published, and uh, had conjectured that during President Carter's visit to Salt Lake in 77 and 78, or 76 and 78, that's when he laid down the law. 76 and 77, I'm sorry. Anyway, just conjecture, that's all it is. So anyway, uh, I wrote President Carter a note and I asked him, this is what's been said about you, that you used the IRS to crack down on the Mormons, to put pressure on them to lift the priesthood ban. And he wrote back a wonderfully written letter and he said, I have no recollection of ever doing that. However, I did help the Mormons with welfare and some work in Africa, getting them something in Africa. He didn't, he didn't elaborate. So he, President Carter said that. So this is a recent letter? This is three or four years ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I should add too that I've been to his, I have family in Atlanta. Okay. So during one of my uh, trips to see my brother and my sister years ago, I spent a lovely day at the Carter Library looking for these kinds of things. And there were big thick Mormon files, but none, nothing that dealt with the IRS. It's weird to be doing history on living people. <laughs> it is, because they, they fight back. So, when they're dead, they can't say they don't fight back. So it, it's a challenge writing contemporary history, yeah. because they, they're alive, they read it. Uh, anyway, so, so I, I am intrigued about this whole IRS thing, because it's been said for years that President Kimball lifted the ban because of the IRS. Right. And what I found in my research was that um, the IRS did revoke the church's uh, tax exemption status in Wisconsin, according to Leonard Arrington, the church historian. And Arrington said that he wrote a letter to his children after the revelation saying that, uh, I'll paraphrase the letter, he said that the church lost its tax exemption status in Wisconsin and was poised to lose it in Hawaii. It's a good thing that President Kimball had the revelation. I don't think Arrington was implying that the revelation occurred because of the IRS. That wasn't my interpretation at all. It was just a, it's a good thing that we had the revelation. And he also, uh, Arrington, in another collection that, I, that I've seen, that um, the church's lawyer, a guy named Miles Sorensen, uh, talks about the church losing its tax exemption status in Wisconsin and also Hawaii, or poised to lose in Hawaii. So he was echoing what Arrington had said. So anyway, um, those are interesting questions. I've worked with the, I've reached out to the IRS in Wisconsin and there's, the, there's just no, I can't find anything. They've worked, the IRS has worked with me, they just couldn't find anything and I haven't, so. Anyway, um, but as historians, we're asked to evaluate evidence and I just don't see, I'm not persuaded that President Kimball had the revelation because of the IRS. Certainly that was a nuisance to him, but that's, that's not what's going on. Okay, so let me make sure, because I, I agree with you. I've seen these re internet rumors that the church had the revelation because they were going to revoke their tax exemption status. Because I think we even still have that a little bit with the gay issue as well, um, especially BYU and the Big 12 and, and that sort of a thing. But so you're, you're saying that, so Arrington came up with some sort of an issue with Wisconsin, but you haven't been able to find it? Is, is that what you're saying? Well, Arrington is um, repeating back what he heard from the upper ups. He clearly is not in a position to know what's going on with these kinds of issues because he's just the church historian. Mm -hmm. So he heard it from Miles Sorensen. And so I've got two or three documents in my possession where they mentioned the same thing, that it was the, the church had lost its exemption status in Wisconsin and they were poised to lose it in Hawaii. So what I want to know as a historian is when did the exemption go away and when was it restored? and what were the motivations? And I couldn't find anything on the IRS's part. Uh, so that's where the trail went cold for me. Could it have been like, a, instead of the IRS, maybe a state tax issue, possibly, or? 
Uh, the document state IRS. Because you would think IRS would be nationwide, not just in a specific state, wouldn't you? That's what I thought. Yeah, I'm not a tax expert, but that's what I thought. That they're, uh, you know, what you find with this in this country of ours, when the federal government makes policies, the states or the, the laboratories that sort of decide if they want to implement some of them or not. And in this case, I don't know. I haven't seen the Wisconsin, so I'm going to speculate for a moment. But probably if the Nixon administration had sent this directive out and the Carter folks had sort of kept it, then uh, Reagan will change it all, by the way, just to give you a full sense. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the Carter administration was generally perceptive towards the, uh, using the IRS to put the squeeze on churches that discriminated. And so um, that's probably the impetus for doing that in Wisconsin because it was, this, was, this was all over the newspapers, the Washington Post, the New York Times. I mean, they're talking about Nixon doing this and then Carter having this experience too. And uh, not to change subjects real quick, but um, Bob Jones is part of this too. During the, the Nixon administration, Bob Jones is caught up in this. And they have a very specific policy on their promotion literature that says that blacks and whites can't marry. So Bob Jones University is in South Carolina, right? Bob Jones University, the ultra conservative evangelical university in South Carolina is, is among the earliest casualties of this IRS policy. And it, um, there's a lawsuit in 1975, and they lose in the court, they lose in the court, they lose in the court, then it goes all the way to the Supreme Court by 83. And the church will write a friend of the court brief. And for your listening audience who might not know what that means, it's, uh, it means that you, you're not directly privy to the lawsuit, but you have a vested interest in the outcome. So in this case, the church wrote a friend of the, the McConkey, Kirtland McConkey law firm in Salt Lake that works for the church. They wrote a friend of the court brief in Bob Jones. And clearly they're, they're afraid of some of these um, implications of the government stepping into the First Amendment sphere. So anyway, what's interesting about this is that in the 80s, early 80s, when it goes to the Supreme Court, the Solicitor General is supposed to defend or represent the government. And in this case, it's a guy named Rex E. Lee. <laughs> And um, who was the former dean of the BYU Law School. And then he leaves to go into government work. And of course, subsequently, when I was at BYU in the 90s, he was the president there. Wow. When my wife and I were there. So anyway, brilliant lawyer. And anyway, he recuses himself in the Bob Jones case. Oh. Yeah. Because he's a Mormon. And then because he's a Mormon and, and he has a dog in the fight. Okay. Yeah. And even though this is interesting, this is after the revelation, right? This is 83. The revelation happened five years earlier. But um, so clearly racial issues probably weren't the burning issues at the time. I'm going to extrapolate here for a moment or at least conjecture. But uh, this is coming on the heels of ERA, right? And so those general legal principles about the government intervening into a private religious sphere, that's what they're worried about. So if it's not, you know, telling us what we have to do with black people or theology or women or gays, so that's what they're worried about. And these issues, of course, are still burning today. That, that delicate balance between the right to you know, live your life and not be discriminated against because of your sexual orientation or your race or your color or your whatever, your religion. And then, of course, acknowledging the right to believe what you believe and practice what you practice vis-a-vis -vis your religion. I hope you enjoyed our conversation with Dr. Matt Harris. In our next conversation, we're going to talk about why Apostle Mark E. Peterson was out of the country in June of 1978 when the revelation was received. This is my opinion, but it wasn't uh, no coincidence that President Kimball chose the time to go to the temple and to pray with the apostles when Elder Peterson was out of the country because he, was a, he just didn't support giving black men the priesthood. If you'd like to hear the entire interview uncut, please support Gospel Tangents and become a subscriber. For just $5 a month, go to uh, patreon.com slash gospel tangents and you can hear the entire interview. And you can also get uh, transcripts available at either our Amazon website or if you want to give the money to me and not Amazon, please subscribe on my website at gospeltangents.com and you can click the yellow subscribe button. Of course, we're also on Facebook, Twitter, and all the other places. Uh, make sure you subscribe on iTunes at tinyurl.com slash gospel tangents. And don't forget to click here to subscribe on YouTube here for a transcript. And over here we've got some more of our great videos. Thanks again for listening.